meeting daily at its headquarters in Orlando, Florida, the Army Air Forces Board convenes to discuss and find solutions to urgent military problems. One such problem was considered in a board report known briefly as Project F-3607. For months, B-29 operations had been slowed down in part by inefficient bomb-loading methods. The size and great capacity of the super fortresses posed a problem to ordnance and armament crews charged with loading the B-29s for combat missions. The problem contained in the report of Project F-3607 was investigated by the Army Air Forces Board. Colonel, what do you have on the B-29 project? Sir, I have a preliminary report here. I'd like to discuss it, if I may. Project number F-3607, tested the bomb hoisting and handling equipment of the B-29 airplane. As you recall, General, we ran a series of tests using various combinations of men and equipment. We found that for speedier and more efficient loading of the B-29, it was best to use a five-man crew in each bomb bay and motor drives for the C-3 bomb hoists. A motor drive set consists of the following equipment. An electric cable, which carries the power from the generator to the control box. A pendant switch to control raising, lowering, and rolling the bomb. A control box to relay power to the motor drive units. And two motor drive units. Each of these is attached to a C3 bomb hoist, which is shown here already bolted to the hoist support. This entire assembly is passed up to the men on the catwalk, who attach it to the back of the bomb rack with lugs and locking pins. Meanwhile, one of the other men makes ready the power source to operate the hoisting motors in both bomb bays, a 110-volt DC generator. Inside the bomb bay, the cable is run from the hoist just installed over a pulley and down to the point where it will attach to the bomb. On the opposite bomb rack, is installed an identical hoist assembly. The cable from this hoist is strung over pulleys which have 12 possible positions in the yoke. The positions used are determined by the rack to be loaded and the size of the bomb. The equipment in place, the crew starts the actual loading. Using a 500 pounder, the bomb is rolled into place and the A2 sling is attached. In construction, it appears very similar to a bicycle chain. But this sling has the property of gripping a bomb so tightly during the lift that it absolutely prevents it from slipping. Once the sling is locked, the hoisting cables are hooked into their attaching points. When the 500 pounder is ready to be lifted into the ship, one man controls the switch that raises and lowers the bombs, while the other attaches the bomb shackle to the carrying lugs. As the bomb reaches a point slightly above its loading station, the shackle is positioned. Next, the switchman lowers the bomb slightly and the shackle becomes engaged in the hooks and the bomb is secure. The second 500 pound bomb is loaded exactly the same way. The A2 sling is easily disconnected once it is relieved of the weight. The third bomb and the fourth are loaded the same way as the other two. And if any bomb shackle doesn't align properly with the hooks, the switchman can roll it into position. For loading bombs on the center racks, the pulleys are rearranged on the yoke and the cables are restrung. The bomb loading charts in the ship give directions on how this is done. These pulleys are easily attached or detached by locking pins, yet they're strong enough to withstand the weight of any size bomb to be loaded. It's only a matter of a few minutes and the center rack is ready for loading.
Using this equipment, 10 men loaded this B-29 with 4,500 pound bombs in one hour and 15 minutes. In loading the B-29 with one and two ton bombs, a change in procedure is made. The 500 pound racks are replaced with special racks used for the 2,000 and 4,000 pounders. And the bomb itself is lifted with two slings. That means doubling the number of hoists and motor drives used. The switchman will have two pendants to operate. And since the two motors may not run at the same speeds, he must control them carefully so that the bomb rises evenly. Normally, the A2 sling won't fit around a 4,000 pounder, but it does here. That's because an extra length has been added by means of a connecting link. Once the sling is attached, the cable is lowered and hooked to it. Then the slack is taken up. When the cables are taut, the shackle is attached and the men make certain that it's secure. In spite of the fact that this bomb weighs eight times as much as the other, it still only requires two men on the ground to steady it and two on the catwalk to attach it. Using this equipment means that at the end of a bomb loading job, the crew is not exhausted. The same men can load another ship immediately and continue loading ships. And that means manpower is saved because the crew need not be replaced. Well, sir, I guess that about sums it up. The equipment tests satisfactorily, employs a maximum of five men for bomb bay to operate, greatly reduces bombing uptime, and permits fusing before hoisting. I believe the conclusions we've drawn are sound. Bill, well, what do you think about it? It's good news from our viewpoint, sir. The equipment is easy to maintain and not too heavy. This last point is of special importance since we've always been concerned with keeping the weight of the B-29 as low as possible. I'm particularly interested in the A-2 sling being foolproof. We've lost too many planes and men by bombs slipping from the slings. I'm all for it. What does tactics have to say? Well, I look at it from the angle that a squadron of B-29s can be bombed up and the time required for fueling. That's always been our aim. We did it with the 17s and 24s, but with the 29s, the job has always been too slow. I say let's get this equipment in every 29. Approved. <laughs>